In this video, we're going to look at the principle of corresponding states. Now, in the previous video, we've been working with this van der Waals equation. Uh, in the last video, we derived explicit expressions for the critical constants based on the van der Waals coefficients. The principle of corresponding states hinges upon the definition of something called reduced variables. So if you want to think about reduced variables are basically a ratio between whatever your current uh, value is and its critical component. Right, so for pressure, we can define a reduced pressure. So P sub R is going to be our reduced pressure. And it's a ratio between the current pressure and the critical pressure. Right, we can do this for all of our uh, state variables that define our critical uh, isotherm. So for the critical temperature, right, we can define a reduced temperature where it's a ratio between the current temperature and the critical temperature. And the same thing for the volume, we can define a critical molar, vo uh, reduced molar volume as a ratio between the current, mol whatever the current molar volume is and the critical molar volume, right? So these are reduced variables. So we call these reduced variables. Right, and so we can define a reduced pressure, reduced temperature, reduced volume. These are all of our reduced variables. Now, what we can do here uh, to kind of analyze these reduced variables a little bit further, I want to re-express pressure in terms of the reduced pressure and critical pressure. Right, so let's say we got pressure is equal to PR times PC. All I did was just crank a little algebra there, multiply by PC on both sides. Uh, for the temperature, that's going to be equal to TR times TC. And for the volume, we have V bar is equal to VR times VC. Okay, so we've defined the pressure, temperature, and volume in terms of the reduced and critical components. So what I want to do is actually take all of these guys. So let's take uh, all three of these. Right, so I want to take these three and plug them into the original van der Waals equation. And let's see what happens when we do that. Right, so we know that if we take this definition, right, we can re-express the van der Waals equation in the following way. So we can have PRPC on the left-hand side. All I've done is just substitute this guy in for P. So instead of P, we have PR times PC. And that's going to be equal to R TRTC over VRVC minus B minus A over VR squared VC squared. Okay, so uh, let me kind of clean up that. That kind of looks like an E there. So let's clean up that subscript okay so uh, so now what we've done is plug in um, these redefinitions of pressure temperature and volume in terms of the reduced and the critical uh, va uh, values right so what I want to do is take the uh, critical pressure temperature and volume that we derived in the previous um, video plug those in here for PC TC and VC and let's see what we get right so if we plug all of those in, right, so we end up on the left-hand side with A times PR, right? So we don't really know what PR, we don't have an expression at least for PR, you know, TR or, or VR yet, but we'll get a, a very interesting relationship when we plug all of this stuff in. So uh, first term here will be uh, 8A. So we'll have 8A TR over 27B squared 3VR minus 1. So I've, I've plugged everything in, but I've also done a little bit of algebra here as well. So then we get A over 9B squared VR squared. Okay, so biggest thing I want to point out here is that if you look at this expression, right, 
if we were to divide both sides by a, right, then that means these a's would cancel out algebraically, right, since you could factor out a here since it's in both terms. And the same thing happens for b squared, right? So b squared cancels out since it exists in all terms, right? So what does that leave us with? Well, when we do a little bit more algebra, we end up with the following expression. We get PR is equal to 8TR over 3VR minus 1 minus 3VR squared. Now, notice something about this equation, right? there is literally no dependence on a and b so what this means is at the same reduced volume and reduced temperature you will produce the exact same reduced pressure this means that this equation has no dependence on the identity of the gas this reduced formula will give you the exact same pressure regardless of the identity of the gas so this gives you an unprecedented level of predictive power based on this equation, right? Just like with the ideal gas law, right? It doesn't matter whether it's CO2 or O2 or methane, right? If it behaves ideally, it behaves ideally. We can do the exact same thing for real gases if we redefine everything in terms of these reduced components. So just like with the ideal gas law, you can apply it universally regardless of what the identity of your gas is, right? You get this exact same behavior. And that's the principle of corresponding states. It's basically the observation that when you use these reduced variables uh, at the same reduced uh, vo uh, volume, and temperature you get the same reduced pressure regardless of the identity of the gas that's why they say it's corresponding states these um, these state variables correspond regardless of what the identity of your gas is